Hi guys and welcome back to another video and the last one of the year it is that time of year when we look back and see what we've done and achieved both from a company level and on a personal level for myself. So let's get into it. Firstly, I want to thank my friends Elitsky Tuning for this very nice Driftmas jumper. As you can see, it's not Christmas, it's Driftmas with a very nice E46 M3. I spent a lot of time with them at the SN Motor Show, which I will discuss in this video towards the end. And if you've been following our videos, we've done a few of their valve exhaust on our cars and we've got some projects with them to do next year. So let me start by going right back to January beginning of the year and we started off with a big bang. We took over BMW Park Lane showroom, which was an amazing event. We still had some restrictions because of COVID and we weren't able to get as many people into the showroom as we wanted to. But essentially we filled all the spaces they had in the main showroom with our car collection. So it evolves cars, the cars I own jointly with Bilal. And they were in there from Friday till Sunday. It was an absolutely an amazing event. And for me, it was very emotional because I used to go past that dealership as a kid, hoping and dreaming one day I'd be able to buy a car from there. We've bought many since then, but see our cars in there and meet people that we know, come in to have a look at them. Seriously, it was absolutely mind blowing. And we do have a part two coming up. So keep an eye on the date on that one. As part of my role for Eventuri as the co-owner, myself and Bilal went over to Turn 14, who are one of the largest aftermarket distributors in the USA. We went to visit their very impressive facilities and give them an overview of the brand and give the sales guys some background on us and give them training on the product so they were in a position to sell to their dealers. We'll put a link to that video here so you can check out. Essentially their warehouse was uh, like Amazon, it was completely automated, it absolutely blew my mind, not only in terms of the technology they used, but in terms of the scale of the business that's available in America. It makes the UK seem very, very small. Shortly after arriving back from Turn 14 and my trip to Philadelphia and New York City, we went to Park Lane to pick up our much anticipated individual M4. Now, if you remember, we bought a G80 M3 as soon as they launched so we could carry out some aero and even cheery development. That car was with us for about one year because that's how long we waited for our individual order. We placed the order for the car quite early on, but because of all the delays with the chip shortages and picking the individual color, which took another six months over a normal order, the car did take a long while to arrive, but I was very happy with the outcome. I had to sign two pieces of paperwork to say I wanted the particular color combination and everyone really enjoyed the color reveal video because although the car is a very bright individual mint green with the San Marino yellow interior inside, the video of the reveal showed the car completely gray and we were showing it to be a big secret as to what the color was and people didn't understand why in the video the car was gray and then right at the end Matt flipped the switch <laughs> and the car went to mint green. It's the only one I've seen in the UK so far. There are a couple floating around in the world but I think it's the only one with the interior color combination we had and for us that car is an exciting project because we didn't tune the G80 but this one because it was xDrive we knew this was going to follow the same path as our F90 M5 and we have started that process with stage one and the stage two tuning. The results are really impressive. If you haven't seen those videos, we will put a link up so you can check those out. And next year, well, early next year, we're going to start the process of building the engine same way we did with the F90 and then getting it ready to race around March time when all the race season starts. As most of you know, it was 50 years of M and M did celebrate in quite a bit of style. One of the first things we did was go and visit Welt because they had a special display on at the museum. Essentially, they took all of my favorite concept cars and the secret projects and brought them all out for the first time. So we got to see 
Oh, the list is endless, but watch my video because I was gushing over these. The CSL Homage, the M1 Homage. We saw the V12 X5M. We saw the E46 M3 Touring. We saw the E34 M5 Convertible. I mean, the list goes on and on. They had the race cars in there. They had the art cars in there. My mind was completely blown. That's probably one of the best collection of BMWs I've ever seen. I'm glad I went out to see it because it was only on for a short space of time. I believe all those cars have been moved and the display has changed now, but that was an amazing effort by BMW in celebration of 50 years of M. If they ever do that again, guys, I, I urge you just get out there and see the cars because you very rarely see them in one space. Following on from the celebrations at Velt, BMW really pushed the boat out at Goodwood. They had the biggest stand that I've ever seen them do. They had a massive collection of cars to go up the hill all from the history going all the way forward from like the E9 CSL race cars all the way to the modern age and they even debuted the M3 Touring at Goodwood so that was the first time that I got to see it. Not only did we get to see it static on BMW's stand we also got to see the car run up the hill. It was an amazing display again and BMW even had the big sculpture in front of Goodwood House. So they really did push the belt out for that and the touring was as impressive as I thought it was. A smaller event at Goodwood, but perhaps more enjoyable for us, especially as a team, was Players Classic. Now this is the first time that we've fully exhibited at this show. We've been going in various guises, normally because one or two of our cars are on various stands. So we've had, for example, one year, one car on Bilstein stand and another one on CSF Wavetrack stand with Regal Automotive. But this year I decided that we were going to have our own stand. One became available in a prominent position. And again, we took some of our most loved cars there. We had two cars on the track on Saturday, the M2 and even Churri's Yaris. And we had some of the other cars on display in the main area. This is by far my favorite UK show to attend and go as not only a exhibitor, but also as a person who wants to go and see what other builds are there. They are so varied. I urge you to watch the video to see what type of cars are there. We are going to be at Players Classic 2023. We're just waiting for the dates to come out. But if you haven't visited our show, I highly recommend it. As you know, myself and my business partner for Eventury, Bilal, are big BMW M fans. And we've been over the last couple of years going through and buying some of our favorite pieces of history. This year, we probably outdid ourselves because not only did we get what is my dream car in the Z8 and probably Bilal's as well, which was a huge achievement. We also bought an E30 M3, which we were not planning to buy at all. The Z8 was planned right from the beginning. We had a set number of cars we wanted to buy and we said we'd buy the Z8 at the end. I turned around to Bilal one day and said, well, we got the funds to buy Z8, so why don't we just start at the top and work our way down instead of doing it the other way around. So we were located a really nice one owner 41,000 mile Z8. Uh, we bought it from Hexagon and then we proceeded to tune it and make it look exactly how we wanted to and the car has turned out amazing. It looks exactly how I envisioned it to and it's been an absolute joy to enjoy it in summer. I've taken it to Caffeine and Machine a couple of times, done a couple of road trips in it. It now looks and sounds absolutely fantastic. And you know you have that thing, never meet your heroes. I'm glad I met that hero. With the E30 M3, if you want to watch the full video, we'll put a link to it. But we didn't have a plan to buy one. And I got approached saying there's a beautiful E30 M3 coming up and you should go and look at it. I said, I'm not really interested. My friend Amar sent me the pictures over. It had just had a full nut and bolt restoration and everything on the car was brand new. So the current owner had owned it for about five years, restored it over three years, and once it was restored, it was so nice, he didn't want to drive it. So he literally put it in his garage at home and he would look at it. And he thought that was a shame and he wanted it to get out into the public so people could appreciate the work that had gone into it. I went to see the car and it was just mind blowing. I saw it on the ramp, everything looked brand new. That's the best way I can describe it. So I phoned Bilal up and I said, I think we should buy this car, I know it wasn't planned. So I am grateful that that is now also in our collection. The weather's obviously taken a turn for the worse since we've had it. We haven't done much to it. We do want to paint correct it and PPF it as soon as we can. So hopefully you'll see that car from spring onwards next year.
Even Chewy Distributor 1014 kindly invited myself and Bilal over to something which they call the Drivers Project. And it's essentially a road trip in and around the LA area, which was based around Monterey Car Week and ending up in Concours de Olegance. I'd always wanted to go to that event and never been able on a position to do it or the timing wasn't right. So I'm so glad that I actually got to go there, see Car Week, see Legends of the Autobahn, and see all the crazy concept cars they have on the lawn. But leading up to that, we had a road trip. Now the initial plan was to export our M3 CSL over to LA and do the road trip because that would have been really cool. They don't get M3 CSLs there. They won't be able to get them until they're 25 years old. And we thought, okay, we could do that, but it's not so relevant to our business. So I was speaking to the guys at IND and explained I've been invited to this road trip and they said, why don't you borrow our British Racing Green G82 M4? So I said, okay, <laughs> we'll borrow that. Um, so the car was shipped from Chicago to our friend Ravi's place at CSF Radiators. They fitted the first CSF inlet manifold charge cooler to the car, it had just been fitted with CSL rear lights and the Alpha N bonnet. And we got to enjoy that car on some really beautiful canyon roads out of LA all the way up to Monterey. So I wanna thank the guys at IND again for trusting me with their pride and joy. I think I've done more mileage in that car than they have. This leads us to the last event of the year, which was Essen Med Show. Now, progress with our G82 M4 had been going really well. I was happy with the way the car was looking, but there was always lots of small details that we wanted to carry out. And it being a big show, we wanted to make sure that the car stood out from the rest and we had had all those little details taken care of. We'll put the video up, but essentially we had lots of little paint details we wanted to do to the car. We had the Alpha M bonnet to go on. So we carried out all those modifications within the space of around two, three weeks. We finished it the day before we had to leave for Essen, which is actually quite good for us because normally we're finishing it on the morning we have to leave and then we're running late. But the car got an absolutely amazing reception over there. I've never received so many messages on my Instagram, so many tags, so many people telling me they didn't like the G82 before and now because of what we've done with R1, they love it. People at the show saying, they can't believe all those little details have made so much difference. Now, I know the white wheels are hit and miss with a lot of people. We love them here. I love the fact that they stand out and they really do suit the car in person. But in terms of social media engagement, that car is perfect because you get equal amount of people loving it and equal amount of people hating it. So it's really good for us. And more importantly, I love the car. So I don't really care what anyone else thinks. With the year rounded up, that brings me to the project cars so we can have a look at what's going, what's gone, and what's coming in 2023. We did make a roundup video on the FAT M3, but because the G82 had now arrived and we knew that we wanted to concentrate on that car, the FAT just didn't get used. I did maybe 13,000 miles in five years in that car, so we essentially just used it for development. I didn't drive it that much personally. And that car was sold more or less in its complete form and a lot of people said to me that I had it advertised for a crazy high price, but I essentially got what I wanted for it. And I think it was good value for the current owner. So that car is basically still in its current form, apart from the fact that the wheels are now black instead of silver. Uh, the G82 tuning is going really well, and we know we're going to be building the engine on that over the next couple of months. So that means the F90 is now going to go I know a lot of people have been asking for content on that car, but we just didn't have any race events really to attend this year. Mr. Vanos uh, has been pushing his car really hard with our support and he's getting some incredible times. He's done like 9.6 quarter mile, 3.8, 100 to 200, which is absolutely incredible. Actually, in fact, he's gone quicker than that. Now I remember, I think he's done the 3.69, which is nuts. And now he's going to push that platform with our support a bit further. So we're then going to concentrate on doing the G82 M4. He's going to do the engine build for us and then we're going to put some Mossman hybrid turbos on the car and see how far we can push that platform. So between Mr. Vanos's F90 M5 and our G82 M4, we're going to essentially have a friendly internal battle between those two cars to see which one we can push further.
So the F90 M5, I do want to sell more or less in its current form. So if anyone is interested in the car, let me know. A lot of people have asked why you're not keeping it. It's because it's not one of those cars I think that I can just keep in the collection. Um, it's my family car. I do use it as that, but now I've started to use the G82 M4. And also for Eventuri, we bought an X5M and I think I'll probably start using that maybe when I need to have some extra space. But honestly, the G82 is comfortable apart from the fact that it doesn't have rear doors. My kids are very happy in the back of that car. What's happening next year? Um, January, Eventuri are getting their development Emira. So that's going to be the V6 manual model. So we're going to develop an intake on that as soon as we can. In March, our M3 Touring is going to arrive. Again, very excited about that because it's the first M3 Touring from BMW after years and years and years of people asking for one. So I'm looking forward to modifying that and making it how I want it. In May, we should be getting our first M2. Now, we did get a chance to see that at Essen Motor Show. And I am impressed with the looks of that car. I didn't like the end performance stuff, but the car itself has a lot of potential. So we're really looking forward to building on that platform. Now the F87 M2 we've had from brand new and that has become a permanent fixture in our collection. I've said that is the last car I would want to sell if I had to. So the G87 M2 has absolutely huge boots to fill because it's very rare for me to build a car from new and then want to keep it permanently normally we would sell it and then if we miss a car we would then rebuy it at a later date with the cars that are coming and going taken care of we do want to look forward to next year and start planning not only our own events but also going to other people's events so apart from doing the standard shows like players classic we want to organize some more meets at our place some more race events ourselves and attend as many as we can. And that includes some European ones. So expect us to be events like Race 1000 in Germany next year in the GAE 2 M4 when that is completed. For you guys that have stuck around to the end of this video, I have two interesting bits of information. One is that we are running our Christmas New Year sale and that runs from this Friday today, I believe, until the beginning of next year. So like the 1st of January. And because we're coming up to 50,000 followers on Instagram, if you're not following us, please follow us. We'll put a link down there. We're going to be doing a competition. So you could win some Evolve parts, some merch, and you could also win a stage two package for your car. So please get signed up to that competition. With that year wrapped up, all that is left for me to say is thank you to all of our followers, customers, dealers, distributors for continuing to support our brands as we keep growing and allowing us to have this channel and to do the crazy projects that we do. I want to ask you guys, what events do you think that we should do next year? Is there something missing from our roster that you'd like to see us doing? Drop us a comment and let us know. For now, all that's left to say is please enjoy this festive season and I will see you in the new year. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on. If you want to join the conversation, please drop us a comment below and we will do our best to respond to you. And if you're running out of things to watch, why don't you watch one of these two?